The effective administration of the petroleum sector in Nigeria has to a large extent maximized fully the economic benefits derivable from Nigeria's oil and gas resources. Let's meet with the Honorable Minister of State for Petroleum Resources, Chief Timipri Silva, to tell us more about the Ministry's success stories and challenges so far. When I came here, this was due to the situation significantly led to the twin problem of the breakdown of the amount established to have been stolen and landed. What the federal government is doing is to provide. So, Minister, you're welcome, sir. Thank you. To this platform. Now, when you came on board, you had a strategic master plan. Uh, to what extent have you been able to achieve the master plan to improve the oil sector in Nigeria? Our strategic master plan, as we came in, was structured around mandates that were given to us. We were given nine mandate areas, and we structured our strategy around these mandate areas. And as we speak, we have been able to tick all the boxes, we've been able to achieve all our mandates. Some of them have been conclusively achieved. Some of them are still ongoing. But we've been able to touch every mandate that has been given to us. So let's share those nine mandates. The ones you've been able to achieve, and where and what are the challenges? For example, um, you will agree with me, just recently, we passed the PIB to law. That was one of the mandate areas that was given to us. The passage of the Inland Basin Bill was also a mandate area. That was also passed very early in my tenure as minister. Then, of course, you know that we also did the marginal fields program. The commercialization of flare gas also concluded. And, of course, one of the other mandate areas was also the rehabilitation of refineries. We've been able to start the rehabilitation of our refineries. That is still ongoing. The other mandate area was to how to curb smuggling of petroleum products. We've also been able to put measures that are stopping this activity. So we have been able to tick all the boxes so far. And for now, what we are trying to do is to now create new areas for us, like new frontiers for us to conquer. For example, the introduction of auto gas for our cars was not part of the mandate areas, but that is really now our focus. And also deepening the penetration of gas so that households, more households will be using gas as cooking fuel is also something that we decided to achieve and we are also focused there. So we've been able to touch everything that was given to us as mandate, and we have also, in addition, created additional mandates that we hope to achieve before the end of our tenure. One major challenge we've observed is the existence of illegal oil refineries in the country. To what extent have you been able to check this trend? That is tied to insecurity. It's a very un unfortunate situation that we found on the ground and we have also tried to work with the oil companies to try to stop this illegal refining. One of the ways we wanted to discourage it is actually to try to to encourage investments in modular refineries. You know we've enabled a lot of those modular refineries. We uh, commissioned one last year and a few are now lined up uh, to be commissioned. And the other issue of the, of the illegal refining activity is more of a security function. It is really not for us to achieve. Because all we do is to liaise with security to ensure that we are able to tackle that menace. And we're already doing that. A lot of people are expecting that private refineries must have started operation. And so, but we know Dangote refinery seems to be making headway. What are you doing about the private refineries? How soon can we see most of them come on stream? Our job is to, is to license the private refineries. That is the first thing we do. 
and we always license them. When, when, whenever we see anyone that has merit, we license. It is up to the private refining investor to get the funding to set it up. Recently, you know that we even bought in as NMPC, as government, into the Dangote refinery just to encourage the development of that refinery. So in 2022, which is next year, end of next year, we're expecting that uh, that refinery will come on stream. There are a few other refineries that have also been licensed. And nobody will tell you that we withhold any, like the, the licensing of any uh, qualified refinery. Anyone that applies uh, for refining license that is qualified, we always issue the refinery license. Also, Azikel Refinery, a few other refineries, uh, we have also tried to buy in because uh, the strategy of government is to actually enable uh, the, the uh, private refining capacity. And one of the ways we want to do that is to buy in so that we take a stake as an encouragement uh, to the uh, investors. Uh, so recently, in addition to Dangote Refinery, we have also taken stake in uh, Azikel Refinery. Uh, so we are actually expecting that there will be a lot more interest uh, in developing private refineries in Nigeria. Now, the Senate has commended the NNPC for anti-corruption efforts drive and towards profitability. How were you able to achieve this? In 44 years of existence, this is the first time the NNPC is declaring profit. And that was because we were able to entrench a lot of transparency into our activities. And that has been able to pay off. Now, let's look at petroleum pricing. Uh, the major challenge is the prices never come down. And there is a likelihood that pump price of petroleum products are likely going to come up. So, Honorable Minister, can you tell us what is the ministry doing with regards to making sure the price of petroleum products come down for Nigerians? What we are saying under the PIA regime is that petroleum product will be sold according to what the market dictates. And therefore, we are not in position to determine the price anymore. What we want to do is to deregulate. Once we deregulate, that means to take out subsidy. It will be the market forces that will determine the prices. And that will be a function of demand and supply. We expect that with a lot of supply, then of course the price might come down. But it will be a function of demand and supply. And that is the way we want to go because that is what the law stipulates. But what we want to do in addition to deregulation is to introduce another kind of fuel, the gas for cars, so, which is, of course, gas is a cheaper fuel. So we expect that people will now have a choice, either to drive their cars with petrol or to drive their cars with gas. Honorable Minister, we produce oil in this country, but there is a trend. We move this oil outside the country to be refined and we bring them back to sell. When will we, or what are the strategies already put in place for us to be able to remove this bottleneck? That is happening because our refineries were not functioning. Now, to stop this, we have decided to rehabilitate our refineries. And how is the rehabilitation oh, oh, coming up? Very well. Potako refinery is being rehabilitated. The, F, the rehabilitation process is ongoing. We're going to inspect very soon. Kaduna is ongoing. Wari is ongoing. So once we are able to get all these re refineries functioning, then we will not be required to take our crude for refining outside. In addition to these refineries, as you asked me, Dangote refinery is also coming on stream next year. It's going to also be refining a lot of crude in country. And of course, all the other private efforts in developing refining capacity and also the modular refineries. All will now come into the, 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 the loop to ensure that we're able to refine a lot of our crude in country, not only for the need of Nigeria, but even for export. What are you doing concerning pipeline vandalization? And of course, the network of pipelines in the country seem to be quite complicated and huge. 
So what strategies are you put in place to, one, forestall pipeline vandalization, and of course, increase the network? First, this is a security, security activity. It is not necessarily our activity. But what we are trying to do to, is to stop pipeline vandalization, what we now realized, as government, as NMPC, we have pipelines and we are not able to secure these pipelines because we have so many other things to do and we don't have the manpower to secure the kilometers of pipeline. So what we are doing is to try to privatize the pipelines. So we are now getting people to take over this pipeline. And that is what the midstream and downstream authority is supposed to enable. So you know, it, you will not have the, 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 the manpower to be able to monitor the whole pipeline. So what we are now doing is to give out all the pipelines to private people who will see this as their core business and run those pipelines as a business and secure them. Looking at policy formulation and implementation, Nigerians are very concerned about sustainability of policies and continuity. This government, of course, by 2023, uh, will be rounding up. What is the assurance that the innovative ideas that this ministry has come up with will be sustained and there will be some level of continuity? Well, that is why the law is in place now. Uh, a lot of the things we are doing are contained within the PIA. For example, you talk about deregulation. It is now a law. So nobody, when we are able to deregulate, nobody can come and turn the, the hands of the clock back. Now the NMPC, by law, is a karma company. It is no longer a government parastatal. Nobody can reverse that. The DPR has now been wound down, and the successor agencies are now the upstream regulatory commission and the midstream and downstream regulatory authority. Nobody can reverse that because it is law. So what we have done to ensure continuity and sustainability is to codify our, our, our innovations in the form of a law so that nobody can come tomorrow and reverse the progress that has been made.